Hey everybody, in the back behind me here, you uh, see my game collection. I give you a quick uh, view there, and um, it's been in the back behind me for every one of my videos. And uh, I just thought that uh, it might be a good uh, thing to go through it, walk you through a, a quick tour of my game collection today on Greyhound Grognard. So here we have the rule, the D and D rules shelf. Uh, you can see right above it, I've got my white box, um, which is the first D and D product I ever bought, but not the one I've played because when I got it, I was like ten years old, and I had been playing war games for a couple of years, um, but I had no idea how to how to play D and D, and I could not figure it out from the white box at all. So um, me and my friend got the. Uh, the, the Holmes basic set, and that was easy as anything. We figured it out, and that's where we started, and then we went to AD&D from there. Um, what sometimes people will complain, you know, some people will post pictures of their collections of their shelfies or whatever, and people will complain that they have so many copies of the same book. Um, now, in terms of, like, the player's handbook, I have a bunch of these because I bring them with me uh, when I'm running games, and that way if somebody doesn't have a player's handbook at the table, um, you know, I've got plenty of spares. So in that sense, that makes, you know, th there's a reason for that. For the other ones, I'd like to have a couple of spares just because, as you can see, these books are not going to last forever. This is my one of my this is my first DMG and you can see the spine is completely gone. Um, you know, it's 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 ready to go. So I've got a couple of spares here. Um, even my I know this is going to break people's hearts to see a uh, a, f a first edition D and, uh, Deities and Demigods uh, with the spine abused like that. But this is the one I bought and and used for years. Um, you know, and I've got as you, you can tell I got fewer and fewer dupes as they, as they go on. Um, I think I've only got one Manual of the Plains and one Dragonlance Adventures books. And, oh, look, there's the Book of Lost Lore and Book of Lost Beasts just hanging out there with their orange spines. Isn't that a lovely thing to see? Um, and then at the, at the end here, I've got just a few little miscellaneous things, some uh, referee screens and the, uh, the geomorphs from back in the day and uh, monster and treasure and so forth. So, um, you know, just kind of miscellaneous, ruley kind of stuff. Down one shelf, and one thing to, to show off is I got a set of those cups uh, from South America, from Brazil. Um, earlier this year, a fast food place in Brazil um, was offering these, uh, these cups as a, uh, like a, you know, like a, a reward, you know, you buy a meal, you get the thing. And, um, and I got somebody to send me a set. So it was very, very cool. Um, they're, you know, they're nice cups. I'm never going to use them as cups as such, but apparently in Brazil, for whatever reason, the D and D cartoon is immensely popular to this day. Um, there's a, 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 a car, uh, advertisement, a car commercial that you can find on YouTube that it basically shows the kids, um, getting back home in the car. It's very fun, but I'm going to get these out of the way for a second so I can show you the glories of my Greyhawk shelf. And that is this. Uh, this has, I think, almost everything uh, that, that was published. There might be a few rarities here and there that I don't have. So, you know, it starts off with the box sets, I've got more than one box set of the World of Greyhawk, not because I'm hoarding them, but because I wear them out. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it goes in order, cities and so forth. And then I've got all the modules um, in their uh, in alphabetical order. Um, you know, I've got the, as you would expect, my copies of things like D2 are very well loved. Um, things that I haven't used all that much or that are newer, obviously haven't gotten, you know, so much wear and tear, but you get a good idea of what's in here. Um, you know, we've got the B's and C's, D's, G's, then down here we've got the UK modules and so forth. And, you know, it goes all the way through to, uh, to the WG things. And I've got two copies again of, uh, Greyhawk Ruins because my original just is, well, too well worn. 
um, sometimes they actually fall apart. <laughs> so, um, and at the back here, eh, um, I've got the some chainmail stuff because the uh, the revised chainmail game from uh, the two thousands uh, actually takes place in Western uh, Greyhawk and Western Ork. So um, you know it's it's canonically part of the setting. So I keep that in there. Now down here I've got some non official uh, Greyhawk y kind of stuff um, as well as some some miscellaneous. It gets a little more miscellaneous as I go down at this point. Um, obviously you know. Uh, Castle Zagig, which was uh, Gary's attempt to publish the setting uh, without it being literally the setting. I've got the, the uh, unofficial Bandit King summary, which is a really cool read, especially if you're into the uh, Living Greyhawk. I've got the... Uh, why, why do I have a Hackmaster thing in there? I don't know. Oh, it's the back of a... <laughs> uh, it's the back of a comic book, um, which all the all the AD and D comic books that were set in Greyhawk are in there. I've got some Dungeon uh, magazine stuff. Um, the unpublished Ivid the Undying, uh, which is available online uh, a bunch of places. I've got El Raja Key, which is a bunch of uh, Rob Kunz's stuff. Um, I've got the complete collection of Castle Entertainment's near Greyhawk stuff, which I can't recommend highly enough. Um, got the O Earth Journal that the now that they've started printing it in uh, you know in in hardcover hard copy uh, it's definitely worth getting. A couple of things you know Ring of Rings of Power has a few things um, that are Greyhawk by you know they're they're Greyhawk but they're not they they uh, you know they use a lot of names from there and it, some of the original people involved uh contributed to it so you know i keep it here obviously my castle mad archmage stuff i love dangerous journeys uh not as a game to play necessarily but as a thing to be mined a lot of the inspiration for my own adventures dark and deep came from there um hall of many pains you know just more miscellaneous stuff we've got some uh, old tsr rarities classic warfare which is a miniatures game uh, rule set that uh, Gary Gygax did, Empire of the Petal Throne, more Petal Throne stuff. I think this is, yeah, Gygax Magazine, uh, Legions of the Petal Throne. I got a lot of Tecmo stuff, even though I don't really, it's not really my jam, but I kind of collect it uh, tangentially. Um, here's some more uh, old TSR stuff. We've got Battle System, which was their mass combat system for second edition. Um, Spelljammer stuff. Marvel Super Heroes, one of the best games I've ever played. I mean, it is such an elegant, simple system. And when you combine it with the graphics that they were able to use from uh, uh, from Marvel, it's just, just amazing stuff. Um, Gamma World in a couple of incarnations, plus Gamma Rotters and, uh, and Revenge of the Factoids. I've, I've long wanted to run a big mega campaign, uh, including Gamma World and Gamma Rotters and just have it all come together in this big massive, uh, thing. I've never really gotten around to it, but it's something I want to do. Um, a lot of Metamorphosis, uh, Metamorphosis Alpha stuff, including my original first thing. I actually bought this back in the day and managed to keep it, uh, keep it uh, together uh, all this time. More Warden stuff, mostly from the, uh, uh, the Kickstarters of, of recent years. Um, just some miscellaneous stuff. This is more of the Kickstarters. Uh, some AD&D books that just couldn't fit anywhere else. Lankmar, I collect the, the AD&D Lankmar stuff um, because I mine it for encounters for my City of Greyhawk. Um, Monsters Compendium. This is I'm, I'm not a two E player. I played it back in the day, but I have this one in particular because the Ravenloft monsters work really well outside of Ravenloft. Um, if you really want to, you know, stir things up for your players, you can you can take stuff out of there. For example, if anybody ever tries to conjure an elemental in a graveyard, they're getting a grave elemental. Um, my Adventures Dark and Deep stuff, which uh, my attempt to uh, to figure out what uh, AD and D would have turned into if Gary had stayed at TSR. Um, Blue Home, which I love. This is a wonderful continuation of uh, the um, the Holmes Basic set, which is uh, it, it's just very cleanly put together, very uh, minimalist, very uh, very slim down, and very playable. And of course, you know the usual suspects when it comes to uh, uh, 
retro clones. You know, I've got Mutant Future, Labyrinth Lord, so forth and so on. There's uh, Swords and Wizardry in here somewhere. Um, fifth edition in its own little corner. Um, the FASA Star Trek game. I love. I loved this game back in the day. And in fact, the Starfleet uh, tactical combat simulator was. An ama- is an amazing, amazing game. Um, it's just so fun to play, and it's not at all like Starfleet Battles, where you have so much to keep track of. You can just kind of go off and do it uh, right away. It's a lot of fun. More Star Trek uh, modules in here from, from the old days. Um, Dying Earth, I've got a bunch of the uh, Dying Earth stuff from uh, Pelegrin Press. Uh, those are based on the Jack Vance uh, stories. Um, I've got some... Uh, uh, some Arduin books in here. That'll make uh, Eric Tenkar happy. Um, the original Star Wars from West End. Um, Ringworld is my one of my... It's a great game for a, uh, a limited campaign. Uh, best one we ever did was we never actually went to the Ringworld itself, but we, uh, we had a whole campaign based on the colony world of We Made It. And uh, with uh, we had some dolphin player characters, and then there was a Kazinti. It was a, oh, just a whole bunch of fun. Um, and just, you know, more miscellaneous stuff. Got tr- the Traveler box set. Um, I don't even know what this is. This is, oh, that, oh this is called, stuff from Call of Cthulhu. Aha. All right. And up we go and around. Um, here we've got my FGU collection, Fantasy Games Unlimited. It starts with Chivalry and Sorcery, uh, which is a really good source book, but kind of unplayable as a game unto itself. And I've just got everything I could I could get. I've got the source books. I've got you know the expansion stuff. Just tons and tons of this stuff. Bushido, which is a great uh, Japanese role playing game. Um, from back in the day, I believe they redid it. Starships and Spacemen, um, Valley of the Mist, which is a uh, uh, an adventure for Bushido. Um, I must admit, this is stuff I just co- sort of collect rather than really use myself. Um, there's the miniatures rules that uh, that they did. There's also in here, oh yeah, Land of the Rising Sun, which is the predecessor to Bushido. Um, there's also this, which is Saurians. It's a um, it's an expansion for chivalry and sorcery, and it's it's got dinosaurs in in I think South America or whatever, uh, and intelligent lizard men. It's it's a really trippy kind of thing. <laughs> um, we've got some rarities here: the Flash Gordon role playing game, also from Fantasy Games. Um, and just, you know, more more stuff I've picked up over the years for fantasy, uh, for FGU. Uh, Sword Lords, Alien Space, which is a Luzaki um, uh, miniatures battle game. Um, what do we have in here? Champions, which is uh, a nice game. Villains and Vigilantes. Oh, yes. The infamous Bunnies and Burrows, where you can... It's basically the role-playing game of the... Uh, um, Oh, what's the rabbit movie? I forget uh, the name of it. Uh, Watership Down. It's basically that without the serial numbers. I've also got the Barsoomian Battle Manual, which is uh, Heritage did a miniatures game based on Barsoom, which was uh, real. It's it's a really neat little game, but it's you, you're not going to see it nowadays because Barsoom. Everybody's got a bad uh, taste in their mouth from the uh, from the movie that Disney did a few years ago. Um, We've got the cards, the uh, AD&D uh, cards that are, uh, you know, they got like um, magic items and, and so forth in there, which is kind of neat. Now we get to my LARP section. Um, I used to do some LARPing back in the day, not so much today. Uh, I got a cop- two copies of Killer, which uh, is a game that was actually banned on college campuses. Uh, you would actually go around with, uh, with, a, a gun- with suction cup guns or squirt guns and shoot other people uh, as part of the game, like physically shoot them. And it's um, the, the college administrators thought, uh, didn't think much of that. Uh, Nero, this is the New England role playing organization uh, up in Boston. They do a lot of uh, LARPing. This is from probably 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, Archaea, another one. Uh, I think this one was in Maryland back in the day. There's something in there, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Here's something um, that Dragon Tree Press did, Beyond the Sacred Table. This is kind of like Arduin LARPing. It's 
Um, it's a it's a weird thing. They there was uh, something in there, I believe, about uh, you could set up your your uh, a dungeon in your uh, cellar and, and and like mark things out on the floor. The IFGS rules are, are have a very interesting history because um, this came about in Boston again uh, in the early 90s. This was uh, done in response to the uh, Larry Niven book, um, Dream Park, which was basically uh, posited if LARPers became very popular and, and were like a spectator sport. And this group wanted to actually do it. Uh, they were trying to solicit ways of doing holograms and things like that. It was very ambitious and ended up not going anywhere, but uh, you know, got the rule book just as a as a piece of history. Here's my Dragon Bone. It's an electronic dice roller. Uh, it doesn't work at the moment because the batteries are dead, but it does function. Uh, all I need to do is put the batteries back in. Some Call of Cthulhu stuff, which is always good. We've got a bunch of Middle Earth role playing. Um, very, as you can see, very well loved. Um, played a lot of that back in the uh, in the late eighties. Um, the, this is the Grimtooth. We've got the originals here, some of the originals anyway, and also the ultimate, uh, thing. I think I got that as a Kickstarter. It's very, very neat. Um, Blackmore. Um, I, I always had dreams of doing a, a, a Blackmore campaign inside of Greyhawk, and I think I'll talk about that at some point, um, in another video. Uh, these folders here are just miscellaneous, uh, papers and things that I've printed out over the years. Um, Myth and Magic. This is my last copy. Uh, this was an infamous uh, Kickstarter that um, the guy printed all the books and then ran out of money to do the shipping. And I don't think to this day he's uh, shipped everything out to the to the backers, but I, I managed to get a couple out of him. And um, you know, like I say, my last one, and I'm going to hang on to it. Um, Monster Book, which probably should go over in the other shelf, but I don't know why it's there. Um... Oh, and uh, some uh, Steve Jackson rarities. Uh, now we get it back. Now we get more into the um, war game and board game section. I'll go through this a little quicker because I'm. You're probably more interested in the RPG stuff. Um, we got some Flying Buffalo games. We got the Lonkmar board game uh, by Fritz Lieber, which was really cool. Some uh, Starfleet battles, which you know we, I mentioned before. I I think the Star Trek. FASA game is better, but I was still a big uh, Starfleet Battles uh, fan. And we got some um, uh, spin-off kind of things. Um, Valley of the Four Winds, which is something you see back in the old ads. Uh, the Elric game uh, by Chaosium. We've got, now we got in, more into the straight war games. World in Flames, Patent in Flames, American Flames. There's big World War II um, operational level games, all the old SPI, well, not all, but a bunch of old SPI games. Uh, Invasion of America was actually the first war game I ever bought, uh, which is, uh, at, I bought it at the Complete Strategist in Manhattan. Agincourt, Source and Sorcery, which is a fun, funny kind of game. Um, and then we get the big soapbox games, Mech War. War in Europe, we actually played a bunch of times when I was a kid. Um, my friend, uh, and I would play it all summer. He actually uh, dismantled his um, um, uh, model train set in the basement so we'd have a table big enough uh, to play it. Objective Moscow I just recently got on eBay. I never had it. It's a kind of a white whale. Um, now we've got some SPI flat packs down here. Some more uh, Avalon Hill games down here. And in fact, uh, Tactics 2. This, oops, sorry for the darkness. Tactics 2. This was the first game I ever played, first war game. Um, my uh, my neighbor actually had it, and they never knew what to do with it. So I, I looked, it looked interesting to me, and I borrowed it one summer uh, when I was, I think, eight, and I forced myself to figure out how to play it. And that, from then on, I was hooked on the whole gaming thing. More uh, Avalon Hill stuff. Titan was our big game in... Uh, in college, Dune, we played a ton of in high school. Uh, Civilization, we also played in, in college sometimes. <coughs> and more just miscellaneous stuff. This is more newer stuff at this point. I'll just uh, give you the tour. <coughs> yes, there actually is a Godzilla <laughs> board game. Um, actually, and there's a another... Uh, not quite Godzilla, 
<laughs> board game. Uh, this is the Terraforming Mars. This is the mega box uh, out of the recent Kickstarter. Um, and we'll just wrap it up with some more board games, war game kind of stuff. And um, there you have it. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a peek into the uh, a deeper look into the collection behind me. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos come out. I've got a Patreon. I've got a web store full of uh, RPG books. I've got a blog with a whole bunch of free downloads on it. So all the links are below. And uh, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.